Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Functional Analysis, Class Number 22. Let us see one result. Let capital B and B dash be to Banach spaces. Capital B and B dash be to Banach spaces. And capital T be a one, one to one continuous linear transformation from capital B on to B dash. Remember that T is one one continuous and it is also a linear transformation. Then capital T is a homeo homomorphism. Then capital T is a homomorphism such that T inverse is also continuous linear transformation. T inverse is also continuous. It is one of the result. It is direct application of open mapping theorem. Uh, what is we learned in previous video, uh, video number 21. So B and B dash are Banach spaces and T be the 1 1 and continuous linear transformation of capital B on to B dash. Mm -hmm. Then T is a homomorphism and T inverse is also continuous. Now we learn one very very important definition projection. We learn one very very important definition projection. A projection P on a Banach space capital B is an idempotent operator which is continuous so projection p projection p defined on a banach space is an idempotent operator it means its domain and codomain is b it is an idempotent operator means p square is equals to p and it also that p is continuous so i said that that is p square is equals to p and p is continuous p square is equals to p and P is continuous. So remember that one of the very very important definition projection. Projection P on a Banach space B is an idempotent operator which is continuous. It means it satisfies two properties P square is equals to P as well as P is continuous. Remember that it is clearly a linear transformation. Now we learn two, pro two more properties of this projection. A projection, a projection P defined on a Banach space, defined on a Banach space, a projection P defined on a Banach space determines, determines a projection P defined on a Banach space capital B, defined on a Banach space capital B determines two linear two linear subspaces two linear subspaces capital m and capital n capital m and capital n of capital b such that b is equals to m direct sum n m direct sum n remember that where this m is equals to p of x such that x belongs to b P of X such that X belongs to B means this capital M is range of P. This capital M is range of capital P and capital N is equals to set of those elements which satisfies the condition P of X is equals to zero. Set of those elements X which satisfies the condition P of X is equals to zero. And this is known as null space of P. Null space of P. So every projection P, every projection P defined on a Banach space capital B determines two linear subspaces, two linear subspaces capital M and N satisfying the condition B is equals to M direct sum N, capital B is equals to M direct sum N, where M is the range of the projection and N is the null space of the projection remember that so right we go for next theorem and which is very very useful theorem for our next coming theorems let us see the statement p is a if if p is a projection defined on a banach space capital b and if capital m and n are its range and null spaces then m and n are closed linear subspaces of b 
such that b is equals to direct sum n in another words this direct sum n is nothing but the property of p you have to show that these m and n are closed subspaces so we prove this theorem let p be a projection let p be a projection on defined on capital p p be a projection defined on capital p that is p satisfies two properties p square is equals to p and p is continuous p square is equals to p and p is continuous these two are properties of projection these two conditions are properties of projection right and they given that capital m capital m is the range capital m is the range of p that is m is equals to set of all elements p of x set of all images where x belongs to capital b and capital n is null space of p null space of p that is capital n is equals to set of all elements such that which satisfies this condition p of x is equals to 0 p of x is equals to 0 so right such that by definition of projection capital b is equals to m direct sum n m direct sum n now we can prove that now we can prove that capital m and n are closed subspaces capital m and n are closed subspaces of capital b we can prove that capital m and n are closed subspaces of capital b right for this by definition of by definition of null space by definition of null space capital n is equals to set of all elements x such that p of x is equals to 0 this is nothing but p inverse of z 0 obviously p of x is equals to 0 means this condition implies as x is equals to p inverse of 0 x is equals to p inverse of 0 so the whole set is denoted by simply p inverse of 0 p inverse of 0 now we go for that is that p is since that p is projection that p is projection it means p is continuous p is continuous we know that there is a property every singleton set every singleton set in a metric space every singleton set in a metric space is closed set is closed it follows that it follows that p inverse of set 0 is closed p inverse of set 0 is closed subspace closed subspace of capital b this implies as capital n is closed subspace of capital b closed subspace of capital b i repeat these properties see here right p is a projection every projection is continuous every projection is continuous and we know that every singleton set in a metric space is closed every singleton set in a metric space is closed so obviously p inverse of 0 is clear is also a closed subspace of b because it is singleton set it consists only 0 so n is also a closed subspace of b n is also a closed subspace of p now it is remaining to prove that m m is also closed subspace right by definition by definition of capital m we have m is equals to m is equals to set of all images p of x such that x belongs to capital b so which can be written as x such that p of x is equals to x x is such that p of x is equals to x which can be written as x such that p of x is equals to i of x where i is idempotent operator where i is idempotent 
operator where i is the idempotent operator remember that here p of x is equals to x idempotent operator so it can be written as x is such that p minus i of x p minus i of x is equals to 0 p minus i of x is equals to 0 so which is equals to this condition implies as this condition implies as so before going to apply one condition so remember that the capital m is set of those elements which satisfies this condition p minus i of x is equals to 0 which satisfies this condition so i means i is identity operator not idempotent i am sorry identity i is identity operator i is identity operator so obviously this i is continuous this i is continuous so by this definition m you conclude that p minus i p minus i is not p minus i am sorry every time i am very sorry for this so we observe this please observe this capital m is null space of capital m is null space of the operator the operator p minus i m is null space of the operator p minus i this is important already we prove that the null space is a subspace the null space is a subspace here also we prove that m is null space of the operator p minus i p minus i and clearly this p minus i is continuous this p minus i is continuous it means m is the null space of the continuous operator p minus i the, this shows us capital m is closed subspace capital m is closed subspace of capital b that's it this completes the proof of the theorem this completes the proof of the theorem from this theorem you learn that you learn that every projection if there is a projection p defined on a banach space capital b then this projection has two sets one is range space the second one is null space such that the banach space can be written as some direct sum of m and n and also these m and n both are closed linear subspaces of capital b closed linear subspaces of capital b right in the next theorem in the next theorem we learn uh, one of the major important property of projections keep learning wish you all the best